The most asked tarot questions. This is a free sample lesson from my Tarot Academy course. If you enjoy it and want to learn more, click the join button below. In this lesson, I'm going to be answering the most asked questions about tarot and tarot readings in general. You may be having these questions too. This video will clarify any confusion you have about tarot readings so that when you start reading for yourself and others, you will be confident in what you're doing and know how tarot readings work. The first question is, do tarot readings predict the future? Tarot is an insightful tool for giving the guidance you need based on the question you asked and on your current situation. It serves a purpose for giving advice, clarity in your path, and it also reveals the outcome for you. Another reason why I love tarot is because it clarifies your current situation to help you gain a deeper understanding of who you are and even how you're feeling and why you have those feelings. But I also believe that tarot can predict the future because it has been used for centuries for guidance and for predicting outcomes of a situation so that if you have the power over a specific situation you take a different path to prevent it from happening or even to make it happen. Psychics who truly know their skill and are really experienced with tarot can predict the future. Keep in mind that a tarot reading is an energy reading full of symbolism. Many predictions do come true, but there's always a chance that some will not because the future is not set in time and it could always change depending on the choices we make. Another common question about tarot is, can anyone read tarot? Tarot is a sacred practice, and some would say that it's not only reserved for people with psychic abilities. The thing is that we are all intuitive. The difference is that some of us have developed their psychic abilities more than others because these people listen to their intuition more and believe that there is wisdom that comes from within. Others only look outside of themselves, therefore their intuition remains underdeveloped. Anyone who feels drawn to tarot and reading tarot can learn this practice and eventually tap into their spirituality and develop their psychic gifts. Next question is, when do you know that you're ready to start reading tarot? You never really know when you are ready to start reading tarot. Tarot is a practice and a skill. It takes time to learn and practice is needed. Learn the basics, how to respect the tool, as well as some of the meanings of the cards, and get yourself a tarot deck. I understand why some beginners may think that they can't start reading tarot unless they have learned all the 78 meanings of each card by heart. But I'm here to tell you that the most effective way of learning tarot is by learning as you read for yourself. So get yourself a tarot deck and start reading for yourself. I recommend you to do a daily one card pool and every day for each card you get, search for its meaning associated with your current situation as well as the illustration depicted on the card. So here you can learn as you read. Reading for yourself is a way to get familiar with tarot cards, learn the meanings, develop your intuition, and practice the skill. When you feel more confident and more familiar with tarot, I recommend you to start reading for your close friends and family without charging them for readings. Make sure you let them know that you're still learning tarot, and take your time when doing a reading. Pay attention to each individual card, as well as the whole spread. Feel its energy, Connect with your emotions and intuition. If you feel called to look up the meaning, it's always okay to do so. One of the most common questions about tarot is, why do tarot readers use oracle cards too? Many people find it confusing that tarot readers combine tarot cards with oracle cards in their readings. So here's why. Tarot is more structured when it comes to interpretation because there is a known list of meanings for each individual card, while oracle cards are more free-flowing and less structured. 
Almost anyone can read oracle cards because they either have written interpretation on each card or illustrations that are easy to understand and help your intuition flow. So the reason why tarot readers use oracle cards as well is to clarify the reading by drawing additional messages from the oracle cards. Depending on the question that was asked, if it's about love, tarot readers will most likely use a love-themed oracle deck. If it's about general guidance, they will most likely use a deck for general guidance. It's important to know that tarot is older than oracle cards. People in the past used to read tarot without using oracle cards. Later, when the oracle was invented, some psychics only used oracle cards in their readings, such as the Lenormand oracle cards. Keep in mind that the use of oracle cards with tarot is optional and not necessary, but it adds more depth into your readings and it opens your eyes to more messages specific to the reading and the question asked. Does my tarot deck have to be found or gifted to me or can I buy my own deck? This is another misconception about tarot. I personally started my journey reading with a regular playing card deck. My ancestors used to practice cartomancy and you can get a pretty good reading out of a regular playing card deck. I found my first deck on a shelf of a new apartment I moved into with my family at the time. It was a deck of regular playing cards that was already used. I cleansed it and I started practicing reading with playing cards. But that doesn't have to be the case for everyone. You don't have to wait for someone to gift you a tarot deck or for you to find one to start reading. If you feel drawn to learning tarot, you can buy your own tarot deck and start the journey as long as you have an open mind and clear intentions. Take your time before getting your first tarot deck. Make sure it's beginner friendly with clear and colorful illustrations and that you feel drawn to it. Another common question about tarot is, do I have to memorize all the meanings to become a good tarot reader? When it comes to tarot, unfortunately, there is no other way around it. Yes, you have to memorize at least three meanings of each card upright. And the reason for that is that these meanings will serve as keywords to help guide your intuition through the reading and give you structure so that you know what message a specific card wants to convey to you. The meaning of each card can be free-flowing sometimes, depending on the cards surrounding it, the question asked, the situation, and the person getting the reading. So don't block your intuition, allow it to flow freely, while keeping in mind the meanings of the cards and associating it to the interpretation. In short, yes, you need to learn at least three meanings of each card upright to help give you structure in your readings, while also using your intuition at the same time to help give you an accurate interpretation. Next question is, as a beginner, can I only read tarot cards upright? Yes, definitely. In fact, I advise you to read only upright if you're finding it hard to memorize all the meanings and if you tend to get confused. This will not affect the accuracy of your readings. You will still get insightful, in-depth readings using the cards upright only. Once you feel comfortable reading with the cards upright, you can start learning reversals and reading in reverse as well. Next question is, can I read with Major Arcana only? Some beginners get overwhelmed with all the 78 tarot cards in a tarot deck and prefer to use just the 22 Major Arcana cards in their readings. There are no set rules and every reader has their own way and method of reading tarot, whether it's a beginner or non-beginner. As long as you know the basics of tarot and some of the meanings, you can use only the major arcana if you feel like it's easier for you as a beginner. Does the order and the position of the cards matter in a spread? If you're a beginner and you want to pull more than two cards, I do recommend you to use a tarot spread so that you don't get confused. 
I will be talking more about this in the video Tarot Spreads of this course. The order and the position of the cards have a huge importance on the interpretation of your reading. The whole meaning of the reading can change if the position of one card changes. Always make sure to lay out the cards either in a spread or according to the order they turned up in. Where the cards are positioned is one of the first things you should look at after laying out your cards. Here is an example. Let's say you're using the past, present, future three card spread and you get the Nine of Swords in the past position, Temperance in the present position and the Sun in the future position. The Nine of Swords in the past position may tell you that the Querent, who is the person getting the reading, whether it's you or another person, has been through deep trauma, pain and sadness in the past that may be still haunting them to this day. The Temperance card in the present position means that the Querent is going through a healing journey at this time. They are working on their trauma, balancing their chakras and life through moderation, grounding, meditation and patience. The Sun in the future position shows that the Querent has a bright future and that they have nothing to fear. The future will be brighter than their past and they will be happy. Let's say if we had the Sun in the past position and the Nine of Swords in the future position, then the whole meaning of this reading will be different. To answer your question, yes, the order and the position of the cards matter in a spread. Another common question is, how do I protect my readings from the spirits of confusion, the trickster spirits? To protect yourself and your readings from trickster spirits who may interfere with the flow of your intuition and create confusion, you have to be in a powerful state of mind. What I mean by this is that you shouldn't be feeling tired, sick, anxious, hungry, sleepy or depressed before you start your reading session. When you are in a strong state of mind, you will be more focused and focus is the key to an accurate reading. Your frequency will also be high, which will act as a shield of protection that the negative entities can't pass through. There are also other forms of protection that vary from reader to reader. Some would like to wear crystals while doing a reading. I would suggest keeping a glass of water as an offering to your spirit guides and guardian angels, a white candle to keep negative spirits away, or anathema for protection. And last but not least, protect your cards. Your cards are more than a tool. Your cards hold energy, carry and absorb energy. That's why tarot cards are a sacred tool and any divination card too. Don't lay them directly on the floor. Don't use the cards for playing card games, especially if you're reading with a playing card deck. Your tarot deck is personal to you, so don't give it to others to read with it. But it's okay if you're reading for someone and they touch it, like for example cutting the deck. I will be explaining this more in the video Reading for Others. Also, put your tarot deck in a respectable safe space, anywhere you feel is good enough. Wrap your deck with a clean cloth to protect it from unwanted energies, and before you do a reading, knock on your deck three times. Some readers like to blow on their deck. Also, make sure you shuffle the cards properly. Shuffling is necessary to cleanse the cards, put your energy into them, as well as to bond with the deck to get an accurate answer to your question. This is one of the questions that is mostly asked, especially by beginner tarot readers. How do I get confident in my readings? Being able to give an accurate tarot reading is a gift. And you do have this gift if you trust your intuition and have passion for tarot. But also, the secret to getting confident in your readings is practice. Confidence comes from practice and experience. The more you practice, the more you learn and the more confident you become. 
Take your time when doing a reading. There is no rush in interpreting a tarot reading. You don't have to be talking non-stop. You don't have to feel like you need to fill in the gaps. And if you feel drawn to checking the meaning of some of the cards, there is no shame in doing so. Maybe the cards want to draw to your attention a specific meaning. I will be sharing more about this in the video, How to Read Tarot with Accuracy. Next question is, can you read tarot for yourself as a tarot reader? The short answer is yes. However, this varies from one tarot reader to another and depending on the situation you're reading about. If it's something you're really anxious about, then your emotions may interfere with the reading, making it confusing for you to understand the messages. If it's a situation that doesn't really make you anxious and you won't mind if the outcome is positive or negative, or if you're looking for guidance about which path to take, then your emotions may not be as intense, so they won't overwhelm your intuition and understanding of the reading. What should you do when your tarot reading makes no sense? When your tarot reading makes no sense, ask yourself why. Maybe you didn't shuffle the cards properly. Maybe you need to cleanse your tarot deck. It could also be your energy. Maybe you're feeling tired or anxious and your intuition is blocked. Maybe the question you asked wasn't clear enough or maybe you were focusing on something else when you were shuffling. Another reason for that could be that your spirit guides don't think it's the right time to reveal the answer to you. Whatever the case is, always take a deep breath, reshuffle, or try to rephrase the question so that it's clear, because the way you ask your question is important in order to get a clear reading, because clear questions give you clear readings. If you feel like your tarot deck needs cleansing, then cleanse your deck and reshuffle, or maybe use another tarot deck if you like. If there was only one or two cards that you didn't really understand what exactly the message they are sending you, you could always ask the deck to clarify the meaning of that specific card. Say for example I did a reading. The page of wands was in the spread, but I feel like I needed more clarification, so I ask my spirit guides, please Clarify the page of ones. I reshuffle and I pull an additional card to help me understand more. When can I start charging for my readings and how much should I charge? I want to clarify that tarot is more than private readings and charging clients. You shouldn't be learning tarot if the sole purpose of it is doing private readings and charging clients. Just like any other spiritual practice, once you acquire this gift, you have a mission and a responsibility to use it to help yourself and others. Learn the art of divination because you are drawn to it, because you have so much passion towards it. It is like learning a musical instrument. You can't get good at it if you don't love what you're doing. You have to be passionate about it. If you stay true to tarot and practice it with respect, tarot will give back to you. It's important to know that tarot readings are a big responsibility. What you say in a reading can affect a person's life, feelings and decisions. Before considering reading for others, make sure you learn the basics of tarot as well as the meanings of the cards. Practice by doing readings for yourself as well as your close family members and friends. Let your family and friends know that you're still learning. And avoid reading for people who don't believe in you and have doubts about tarot and spirituality in general. These people will crush your confidence before you even start your tarot journey and will block your intuition. Your friends and family will give you feedback, which will help you know whether you need more practice or you're good. This will take some time. Now that you've gained a few years of practice and feel confident enough to start offering your services to clients, start by charging a low price. Because the more experience you have, the more returning clients you will get. And that's a sign that you are a good reader. So you can gradually increase your prices 
depending on how much experience you have. I'm not going to tell you exactly how much you should charge. The amount you decide to charge your clients is between you and your spirit guides. It's personal and it's different for every tarot reader. That's all for this lesson. If you enjoyed it and you wish to learn more about tarot, click the join button and become a member of my Tarot Academy. Many blessings.